on with Musician News, and we're at the Winter NAM 2012 in Anaheim, and I'm here with Tim from Samplitude. He's going to tell us about some of their new stuff. One of them is Sequoia 12 and Samplitude Pro X. Yeah, we just released Samplitude Pro X back in October. Uh, it replaces Samplitude version 12. We've changed the name for it to start a new series. Uh, Samplitude 11 was a huge success, especially in Europe, and it's growing more and more success and, and uh, is more and better known now here. Uh, with Pro X, we've really increased uh, the market share. We've gone to 64-bit. Uh, that's also going to happen with Sequoia, which I'll talk about the releases coming up. Uh, many new enhancements have come, but the main thing has been 64-bit uh, going into Pro X. Samplitude, if you don't know about it, is a full-fledged digital audio workstation. It allows you all of the stuff you would need for recording, editing, sound restoration, mixing, mastering, as well as uh, full CD and DVD audio architecting. All of that's built in. So from the first note to the final master, Samplitude's a program you never have to leave to go access any other programs. You can do it all with that. Right now it's Windows based. We are currently working on a Mac version. After 20 years of being so popular on the Windows platform, we're now expanding onto Mac. That hopefully will be out this summer, so watch for, watch for that. Coming out in February, Sequoia, the big brother to Samplitude's coming out. It's, it's the broadcast version of it, uh, which allows you to work in radio stations and television stations and work with the content management systems that they have there. Uh, but if you're doing music productions, really check out Samplitude and, and look at uh, Samplitude.com to download a trial version and put it through the run-throughs. Okay. Can you show us some of the features now in Pro X? And sure. Yeah. The first thing you're going to notice right now is that you're looking at a spectral view on our normal edit window, our normal VIP window. I'll switch it back here for a second so it will look more traditional to you. What we've done is in the past we've had spectral editing available where if you click on an object, you can open it in the spectral editor to edit out things that you don't want, say in a drum track like hitting sticks together. Well, if you're doing drums, you have many, many tracks of live drums. We've now made it so you can do simple, basic spectral editing right on our VIP window by selecting all of them, turning on the spectral view, zooming into the offensi offended, offensive note, <laughs> offending note, that would be the right one, and you can circle them and they will disappear, so it's a much faster workflow to do it. This is part of our cleaning and restoration suite also. Uh, that's a little bit of an add-on for sample two that comes with Sequoia, but is worth its weight in gold. Another window to look at, because your two main windows that you have is your VIP window, which is what we're looking at here, which contains your project, and then your mixer window, which of course has long throw faders if you want it. There's various different mixer skins that are available. This mixer skin right here is my setup. And uh, you can customize it to look and feel however you're used to doing it, however you're used to working. All the key commands can be set however you want. We have a docking feature which allows you to have your manager, which is what we call this, you can take it apart and dock things wherever you want to create new versions uh, of your layout. So, so it fits exactly how your workflow is. Let me put it back there for a second. Turned off. If you don't know what the, the about Samplitude, never heard about it, the main strong point is object-based editing. Object-based editing is if you have any object, which is what we call anything on the screen, some people call them clips, you click on an object, even though it's sitting on a track, and on that track, of course, it's going through everything in the mixer. Your compressors, EQs, sends, everything that's normally on a mixer that, that an object would go through. Each object on its own has an object editor. And an object editor allows you to adjust the input gain, add plugins, VST plugins, just to that one clip has an EQ built into it, panning and stereo facilities, all of your, your fade-ins and fade-out facilities, which are all auto when you make a cut, your time stretching and your pitch and your pitch automation, which is like Melodyne, only it's our version of it and better in my opinion, very musical. And all of that is just for the one object. So once you get in, into it and used to using object-based editing, you cannot work on any other digital audio workstation. It just doesn't, it's missing all of the facilities. This selection you made is an object? That's an object. And so this is so an object, that's an object. Oh, okay. So and you've kind of decided what it's going to be an object by, yeah. by, uh, by just marking cutting it? it. That's, okay. There's another object. That's uh -huh. an object. This is an object. Cut. Okay. There's another object. And you can have a series of effects. 
that apply just to that. Right. Or multiples. If I have these two selected, everything I do on this automatically updates and does it to, if you notice it says EQ now, they both have that EQ setting. Okay. Even though everything else on this track does not have that EQ, it's just that. Best example, I'm doing a mix, and I have, uh, I have sent the mix to a customer, and the customer sends me back a little MP3 clip from the singer. He has decided he didn't like one sentence in the pre-chorus, and he wants to re-record it. He does it in his bathroom with his Radio Shack microphone, unlike how they recorded the album, so it sounds totally different. Instead of putting it onto a separate new track, adding all the compressors and everything and, and trying to get it to sound the same, you can throw it right onto the exact same track that you, all of your compressors and EQs are already sitting on, your vocal track. It's automated, it's done. You can replace that one object in there, that one line, open it in the object editor, open up the EQ, change it, tweak it however you want, or open up our FFT EQ and hit sound clone and have it clone the next object, EQ curve, and apply it to the bad sounding one, and it's 90% of the way there. So instead of having to do all of these hoops to jump through to make it fit, I can simply drop it in there, open up the object editor, EQ it, I'm done. No automating needed whatsoever. Yeah, that is very cool. How do you guys handle the 32-bit uh, plugins? Is there like a, it's kind of a bridge kind of a thing too that uh, if this, we're in 64? If you're in 64-bit, yeah. It, it's different. I, as you know, we're the first company to have 32-bit float. I know Pro Tools is toting that as their new thing. We did it in 98. Uh -huh. And so yeah. um, we've always been a 32-bit float engine through and through until this release where we're 64-bit or 32. In a 32-bit OS, like Windows 7, which is what I always suggest people to get, works as always. You load it into a 64-bit OS, Windows 7 64, and you'll get two icons on your screen. One will say sample to 64, one will say sample to 32. And you can run it 64-bit, just like normal, everyone would expect. But there's third-party plugins out there that don't like to get bridged sometimes. They just don't. They're, they're, they're going to fight you no matter what you do on the bridge. Now, almost every plugin out there we have already tested and made sure that our bridge is working strongly. But there's some third-party plugins that just will not work bridged in a 64-bit environment. In which case, you close your project and open it in the 32-bit samplitude, so that way it runs correctly at 32-bit, and all of your 64-bit plugins are bridged the other direction back to 32. So it works seamless bridging, bridging in either direction. It's very slick. Okay. This is Sequoia you're showing right here, then, yeah. huh? And some of the differences uh, with uh, Pro X are. As just far as what I've shown you, everything is sample to Pro X. Oh, okay. When you move into uh, Sequoia 12, which is coming out, Sequoia 11 is current, it looks exactly the same. Everything is exactly the same, except for some stuff underneath the hoods. It's the exact same audio engine between the two, but the things that we have added into Sequoia for broadcast and post-production uh, is a, run them off quickly, a, a advanced crossfade editor that some of the guys that used to work on Sonic Solutions like it. Though everything you can do in that, you can do in Samplitude Pro X with the object editor. It's just a different interface. Uh, user administration, so if we have five engineers, you can walk over to the workstation, log in with your own name, and your whole screen setup and key commands pop up. Uh, it integrates directly into content management systems for radio and television, like David Systems, so you can be the huge content management system that a radio station is working off of for like news broadcast. This will actually go into it, grab it, you can edit it in real time, send it right back, and it, uh. it works with that. You can't do that with just any other doll. Pro Tools, for instance, does not do any content management system type stuff. Okay. Uh, really, that's it. It's, it's broadcast type oriented things okay. that you're going to run into. The uh, Pro X Suite, what does that give you? More instruments or? Yes, uh -huh. yes. If you're upgrading from sample to 11, uh, or sample to 10 Pro. Um, coming up to Pro X, there's uh, the analog modeling suite and a couple others that will automatically be included in your upgrade. But if you're brand new to Pro X, if you buy sample to Pro X, you don't have the analog modeling suite of plugins, which is uh, ammunition, which looks like that one. Ammunitions are are very well known uh, mastering uh, plugin, and so. If you're coming to Pro X brand new, you don't get that. But if you go to Pro X Suites, you get the analog modeling suite. You also get Vandal Pro, which is a guitar simulator. And you get the larger uh, Independence Pro sample library. Last year, we bought Yellow Tools, the company Yellow Tools that makes oh, the Independence yeah. Pro sampler. 
And in Sampletude Pro X, you get a 10 gig library. But in Sampletude Pro X Suites, you get the full 70 gig plugin or sound, the full 70 gig library for the independent sampler plugin. Uh huh. Are you going to release any of the Yellow Tools, the other instrument? They made uh, several in plugins, didn't they? Yeah, Yellow Tools or. I, I don't know what all they're going to do with it. We're going to okay. continue to support the full line from what I know, and okay. you can buy it independently, but it's also included in the sample, in dude, so it's a huge value. Okay. And cool. then all of our plug-in suites, the, the vintage effects, the analog mounting suites, Vandal, Veriverb, all of our really highly regarded plugins that are only available inside SampleTube and Sequoia, we are also porting them out to VST, uh, so you can use them in Sonar. They're also coming out as Mac and PC, so you could use it in anything. You could drop it into whatever program you're using. You can use our award-winning uh, effects plugins. Okay, what are the prices be for the Pro X suite in Sequoia? For uh, for Pro X, it's 4.99. If you're using another program already, Pro Tools, uh, Sonar, whatever it is, there's a cross grade that's only 3.49. Okay. If you're uh, going, uh, so brand new is 4.99. Pro X Suites is 9.99. With a cross-grade offer, you can get for $6.99, and we'll also run specials, I'm sure, on that too. Okay. If you're jumping up to Sequoia, which is the post-production broadcast version, the price is $3,000. $3, okay. All right. Thanks, Tim. You know it. That hey, thanks great, for man. having me out, man. All right.